Welcome to Brian Lehrer Live, where web video meets the issues. This is Brian Lehrer Live, where data visualizations meet the issues. For the next two days, open government advocates from around the world will be gathering at New York's Personal Democracy Forum. The government transparency group, known as the Sunlight Foundation, will be in attendance presenting recent winners from their Design for America contest. But tonight, the Sunlight Foundation's Engagement Director, Jake Brewer, is here to walk us through a few outstanding examples of how the government could be presenting its data. Hi, welcome to the show. Thanks. Good and for people who don't know, before we view some of this stuff, uh, just what is the Sunlight Foundation? Sure. Uh, I mean, the Sunlight Foundation was founded about four years ago to really uh, to change the relationship that citizens have with government. And we want to do that by making government more transparent and accountable, by making sure that all government data is available online and in real time. And we get that, we get, again, better accountability, we get things like better government services, we also get things like economic opportunity. So these submissions that we're about to see, what were you looking for in this contest? Well, this was a, this was a big kind of experiment, a really new idea for us. So uh, in order to get citizens to be more engaged, really create that kind of better democracy in a way that, that changes the relationships that citizens have, Government has to be engaging. People want, have to want to participate, and, and really there has to be ways to collaborate. Uh, and, and there's all kinds of things that do that quite well with the public, um, but government certainly is not one of those. And so we launched a, a nationwide contest um, to, to challenge designers and artists to create new ways to experience government. So not just the way necessarily it looked, but really what government could be and how it could serve the public better. And I know you're going to have a news conference tomorrow at yeah. the Personal Democracy Forum, which happens to be, I think, in this same building. I, I believe so, The yeah. CUNY Graduate <laughs> Center. Right. Um, but uh, you brought a sneak preview of some of the winners for us tonight. So we let's did, see yeah, one of these. This pretty is extraordinary. in the category, Best Redesign of a Government Website. Let's put this up. And you tell us what we're seeing. So we're looking at I, a, a, a re-envisioning of IRS.gov. And so if you look at the old IRS.gov, uh, you'll see quite a bit of difference uh, between kind of a lot of different links, a that, lot of stuff all over the this, place. This is the old one. Exactly. Uh, so this new one has a lot of much you know, more creative use of, uh, of negative space. It really focuses your, the eye towards what is most relevant to somebody coming to uh, figure out more about their taxes. People don't necessarily go to the IRS website to figure out what they need to do, how they need to do it. Um, why they don't do that is, is anybody's guess. So but, we're uh, scrolling down here a yeah. little bit. So this really just walks you through um, the, this whole kind of mock-up that they've created, uh, uh, just a rethinking about how the IRS experience could be. And they've got, uh, if we stay right there for a minute, um, you've got tax season 2010, benefits of new health care tax of the new health care tax credits, um, and if we can go up just a teeny bit, that box on the left right there, common help topics. So yeah. that's just really user friendly and well organized. Exactly. So, so one of the questions is, you recently unemployed, or maybe you're starting your own uh, business for the first time? Just really common tax questions that you have. Just a, a kind of an innovative approach to what you as a citizen would want as you came to irs.gov. Is friendly IRS an oxymoron? <laughs> well, you know, I won't, I won't um, say that it is. I'll challenge the IRS to become, uh, <laughs> make sure that it never becomes an oxymoron. There you go. It also means that you had it. citizens out there willing to enter a contest to help the Internal Revenue Service. Exactly. I mean, this is a great example of how the, the public really can um, not just challenge government and not just experience government on, on them, but really collaborate with government and help to make it better. What are some of the other, before we go on to another sure. category <laughs> and see another thing, yeah. what are some of the other government websites that either were submitted yeah. um, that look good or that are really ripe for redesign? One of, one of the most, uh, one of the sites with the most stark contrast I think that we've done in the past, uh, the Sunlight Foundation has something we call our Redesigning Government Series. So over the course of the last several years we've taken different sites including um, uh, the FCC website, um, but one of the, the ones I love most is the Supreme Court website, which actually takes a website that had to be designed, who knows when, but it looks like something straight out of 1994, uh, and really 
really thought through what it would what it would mean to have a, a, a robust kind of meaningful experience with the Supreme Court. Uh, and so that's one of the other ones we did. One of the ones that I like a lot was um, around social security and really having a website that the government runs that, that really allowed citizens to understand their benefits and how they could um, kind of work with the Social Security Administration. Great. Okay, next category is best illustration of how a bill becomes a law. Let's Man. put this up. I love this one. In fact, uh, I was telling Derek, I've, uh, I've actually used this one myself in the last week. Um, there's a bunch of pieces, of, there's several pieces of legislation the Sunlight Foundation is currently trying to move through this exact process. And so as we're actually mapping out where one is versus the other, we've, I've used this to kind of go, this is here or this is there. Isn't this candy land? <laughs> it actually is modeled after board game. That's exactly right. So uh, board games are engaging. They're interesting. People like to play them. They like to uh, experience them. Um, and, and as uh, I don't, I don't know if this is very well known, but we're actually coming up on the 35th anniversary of um, how a bill becomes a law. The Schoolhouse Rocks kind of traditional way that a lot of people understand the legislative process or lack to understand mm -hmm. <laughs> the legislative process. But this really, this really is a great example of how it can go. You see a lot of these little red flags and these little red buttons throughout the site um, that can show you how things can gum up. So for people that may have experienced over the last year, uh, let's say the healthcare process, which lasted about 11 months, and you saw process being something talked about in the news probably more than it ever has been, um, this is a really good illustration of how all those different things played out. Now, let's keep this up for another minute. You said that you have actually used this. <laughs> I have, yeah. Show us how <laughs> in a way that people can understand <clears throat> and so they might actually uh, you know, be able to use it themselves. Ab absolutely. So uh, different bills obviously come to... Uh, Congress in different ways. and In certain cases, they're required to go to the House of Representatives. In some cases, they're required to go to the Senate. Uh, and actually understanding which is which is, is explained through this. And so as one bill was being introduced or, or being dropped, as we call it, understanding which way it could go uh, was helpful to kind of think about, oh, is this a Senate one or is this a House one? Uh, and then as it kind of comes through the committee process in particular is kind of where the maybe some of the, the uh, least amount of understanding is with the public. What actually happens in these committees and how that works? Um, as it came out of committee, being able to point to the bill that we wanted to move forward being here and saying, okay, this is what's next. Uh, and so being able to take, let's say, a congressional quarterly, uh, kind of the wonky uh, publication of, of D.C., and, and being able to take their information that's written out and be able to map it out on something uh, was really useful. And just to give a shout-out to the winners, this was made by, if I'm not mistaken, Mike Worth Mike and Dr. Worth. Suzanne cooper Guasco. Correct, yeah. Really extraordinary work. Uh, and actually, every, everyone in this category, if people have a chance, <clears throat> I'd, I'd, uh, I'd encourage them to go check out all of them in this category because they were all actually quite extraordinary. On best illustration of how a bill becomes law. Okay. All right, next category, and I really yeah. like this too, best visualization of community health data. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> what were you looking for here, and what did you get? Well, we were looking for a way that people could better understand their communities. Um, and so health kind of cuts across a lot of different types of, of data uh, and different pieces of information. But we wanted people to take, you know, be able to get a snapshot of, uh, well, take that back. We didn't necessarily know what we were looking for mm -hmm. when it came to that, but we wanted people to, to better understand their, their communities. And, and this one did that quite this well. This is called County Sin, right? Correct, yeah. So county by county in America, there are ratings and rankings of the sin quotient with respect to health. So you see that we right. have up here New York County, New York, a.k.a. Manhattan. <laughs> and what are these numbers and what are these graphics? So what this is doing is mapping open government data, so data that's been released by either the, the county level government or, or federal government, um, <clears throat> and it is mapping it to the seven deadly sins. <laughs> so it's kind of taking uh -huh. a, a ubiquitous concept, something a lot of people are familiar with, and right. taking data and making it relevant. Let's see, let's go back to Manhattan for a minute. Can we do that? And then we're going to show uh -oh. Queens. Okay, so let's look at these numbers. Yep. Income inequality. 60. Now, income inequality, that's a health issue? Uh, well, it often maps to health issues. Uh, in, in this particular case, the, the designers of this site were saying, this is supposed to present new information to engage you. Okay. Uh, but certainly, yeah, inequality of, of, uh, of wealth relates to health. Um, so we see, as we flash to Queens, income inequality is 43. So there's less income inequality. However, there's I less. think there's just less money. <laughs> and that may be true. Although you saw that the violent crime rate went up uh, considerably. Compared so. to Manhattan. <clears throat> Correct. So it's basically just in, in, in many ways this contest was designed to, to demonstrate what's possible uh, as much as anything else. And so 
Uh, in some cases, this is more of a fun site, really, yeah. but it really demonstrates how government data can be used creatively and in a fun and engaging way for citizens to, to really understand what's going on around them uh, better. These unemployment rates look like about 2004. <coughs> That's right. Six percent. Actually, if you typed in my, uh, my hometown, in Columbia, Tennessee, or Murray County, Tennessee, um, I think you'd see the, the uh, M-A-U, so uh, M-A-U-R-Y, M A U R Y. <clears throat> Murray, Tennessee. I think we the, say that uh, Murray in New York. Right. In uh, where I'm from, they say Murray. But uh, if you go there, I think the the unemployment rate will probably be a little bit higher there. No, well, not as high as I thought actually. But uh, more wrath though. More, more wrath. gun violence <laughs> per capita, I guess. Correct. Um, yeah. Let's see. I can't remember whether it's higher or lower than Brooklyn on lust. <clears throat> so we'll have to leave that as a mystery for people who want to go to the site. Okay, but there it is. Uh, best visualization of community health data. Just describe another one that you got in that category that you like. Uh, best visualization in, wait, describe the name of the category. To, There's about eight categories. Community, so. community health data, only if something comes to mind. Um, well, I'll tell you one of the best visualizations, and, I, and I, we may actually have this one already loaded. I'm not sure. But the, uh, it was a visualization that showed a just kind of the discrepancy between what government is spending money on versus what the media is talking about yes, on a day-to-day -day basis. That. So, okay, so here uh, that is. What are, oh, we, great. Looking, what okay, are we looking at? So what we're looking at on the left um, is essentially a, a, the budget. So it took USAspending.gov uh, and took the data so it's, or there and, and the contracts the government puts out. <clears throat> and as you can see, the Department of Defense comes out rather high. I believe it's about 63%. Um, by the data, which is also they made they made the bulk data available on the site, um, and so you kind of see the different the different places that money goes uh, by contract with the government, and then on the right you actually see the media mentions uh, using the New York Times as an example. And, and uh, by the way, this looks like the Gulf of Mexico <laughs> yeah. with the rust-colored oil spill <laughs> it does look like in that. the middle, uh, floating underwater. Yeah, but that anyway, is extremely sad. Um, so yeah, so there's actually a fuller visual that kind of encapsulates, uh, it looks like almost a cassette deck, and it kind of just maps the, the money versus the amount of conversation we've had about it. So health, um, which you may or, not be, may or may not be able to see on the right, was the most talked about topic in 2009 versus the money and government spent on that being actually quite low. So in the terms the, of the USA spending contract. Process. Right, so what's uh, the highest uh, category on the right. The right is the media, right? If you're looking from Correct. the right, it's media coverage. Right. Um, and so decode this for me. <laughs> what does it tell us the media was focused on in terms of government spending? So basically it basically says that uh, health, and then I, I actually can't read That's the next one. because of the health care debate. <laughs> but I of presume. course, because of the health care debate, uh, assuming so. Then energy, then defense going down. Right. And you can see kind of the width of that, that margin there on oh, the right hand side. Oh, I see. So that's why the, the, the dark blue is kind of small. connected, right? Right. Very big at the top on the left in terms of the percentage of government spending. And right. then that shape narrows to represent its percentage of discussion in the media. Exactly. And, and as you can see, this is a little bit complex. Um, anytime you're taking, I mean, visualizations and, and infographics uh, are extraordinary tools, and we are, are so thankful to, to have had this contest and kind of see new possibilities how, for how government can make sense to folks. It also can add a new layer of complexity uh, to government data. So, you know, really understanding this and making sure um, that somebody's able to recreate something. It's kind of almost like the scientific method, right? That, that the bulk data is all available and we can kind of check this to make sure that it's actually accurate. So, so many wonderful creations. Yeah. Are people in government listening? Is this going to change anything? <laughs> there seems to be a lot of skepticism from folks because uh, that's almost usually the first question we get. Uh, and and I, I can honestly say that uh, the government across the board and throughout the agencies and in the White House and on Capitol Hill um, are listening. Uh, that there are folks in the, uh, you name an agency, FEC, um, to the White House that are, that are certainly aware. Uh, actually, the White House even blogged about some of this work in the past and mentioned uh, Design for America and the Apps for America contest that we've run as well. Um, and they're listening. It, it's not easy, uh, certainly, and, and we are consistently pushing uh, government to do better. And, and this is uh, uh, ideally an example of, of the way that government could be uh, not necessarily the way that it is, and of course, transitioning from the way something is to how it could be does take time. So we don't we don't uh, only use a stick; we try to use a carrot a little and bit. And so, too. if you've inspired anybody tonight to join you at the Personal Democracy Forum, 
in the CUNY Graduate Center. Uh, if, if you're seeing the show live Wednesday night, it's tomorrow, Thursday, and Friday. All day tomorrow and Friday. Um, and it's not free. People have to pay a registration not fee, free. which I think is fairly steep, right? It, it's it's uh, expensive. There is an unconference, uh, which I think is an extraordinary new model for the way that people can come together on Saturday and Sunday. So if you're not able to to afford kind of the full uh, the full two days tomorrow and, and Friday, then you can actually come together and, and have dialogue around a lot of the same issues on Saturday and Sunday. Right. But what will actually happen at either of these conferences? Great question. Um, it, this is one of the more extraordinary events in the United States every year, in my opinion, the Personal Democracy Forum is. Uh, this will be my fifth year coming. Um, and it, it really is one of the few places where uh, leading thinkers and truly innovative uh, minds uh, are coming to, to really discuss the challenges associated with new technology, the possibilities of new technology, and how that's impacting our democracy, the way that citizens are able to engage with um, public forums and, and things that, that matter to us that impact all our lives, as well as how the media is impacted by that, not just how we consume media, but how we produce media. Uh, and it's people at every level, from the highest levels of government, the highest kind of the uh, producers of media, uh, the biggest companies maybe associated with that, to advocates and people that are really stirring things up and trying to change the, the systems. Because what we saw us. here tonight is really citizen media, right? Your data Absolutely. visualization yeah. contests uh, in categories like, you know, best representation of community health data. Yeah. You're challenging people out there to go and be, if not the journalists, um, at least the illustrators, the designers, but also to some degree the journalists because they have to go and pick out which data they're going to choose to right. represent. Right. I mean, the, our, we are blessed in this country with some of the more brilliant folks on the planet. Uh, and, and the opportunity to run contests like this to really harness some of that, that brilliance and those innovative new ways to envision how we could work with government and each other uh, is what we're trying to do. And we hope that inspires folks. Before you go, give me a quick rating, according to you, yeah. of the Obama administration's transparency level. Certainly they came into office with a lot of sure. hype around, <laughs> you know, uh, recovery.gov and all these other sites that they were going to put up um, to make government more transparent. Yep. Are, they, are they keeping the promise? I think we can absolutely say that, that uh, the Obama administration has made it a priority. Um, I will not give a grade or a rating. I will, I will until uh, he's out of office, just say that it's incomplete. Um, there's been extraordinary steps taken, things like data.gov, uh, recovery.gov, new websites and new ways for the public to see what's actually going on and understand it. Uh, still have a long way to go, and uh, we'll keep pushing them to make sure that they get there. All right. Thank you very much. Keep Thank you, up. Brian.